First of all, welcome Corinza Townsend, and I should say the Chief Administrative Officer for the New Norton West Louisville Hospital. You were named Thank several you. months ago, but how does that sound to you? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Every time somebody says it's like, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, well-deserved, so congrats on that. Let's get a quick update on the construction, because recently was the last steel beam put into place. So really starting to take shape. Does you pinch yourself? Does it feeling real? I tell you what, I was actually down there yesterday um, and I'm, I'm sitting out at our learning center right now, uh, but I was down there yesterday and uh, myself and Renee, a couple of folks from construction, they allowed me to kind of walk through what looks like the facility now and up on the second floor. Um, and so to your point, two weeks ago, we raised the first steel beam or the last steel beam. Um, which is super significant for West Louisville in general. You know, um, history tells us that, you know, they've been, you know, a lot of promises have been made um, and we've seen steel go up. Uh, and this is a major turning point for us to be closing in the building, the last beams going in, you know, Goodwill's building is, is you know, almost done. They're supposed to open first quarter uh, 2024. So to be able to walk up on the second floor and the concrete being poured and um, up in the penthouse, which is where, you know, your air conditioning and a lot of your units will be, walking up through there and looking down and around the community, um, it kind of brings it to life for me because that was my first time being up on that level. Um, and so, like I said, to see the walls close in and us getting ready to start working on the inside during winter, um, it's a dream come true, really. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a little bit about your personal involvement with that dream coming true in just a second. Yeah. But you brought up that history. I mean, it's the first time when I saw that figure, I was jaw dropped. And I'm sure it wasn't a figure that jaw dropped everybody. Many in the community probably knew that. First time yeah. in 150 years, for heaven's sake. 150 sake, years. That a hospital yeah. has been built. And I have to say, that was just shocking to me when I read that, but probably not for everybody, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's prominent for a lot of folks that um, that live in those, you know, five, six zip codes um, here in West Louisville. It, you know, and, and I we say a hospital, a physical 24 hour hospital in the last 150 years. I don't want to say that there hasn't been health care or primary care right. clinics in West Louisville. Right. I always want to pay homage to the folks that have been there and doing the work I and mean, providing the best health care possible. Um, to the residents of West Louisville. So I always want to say that out loud that um, we are not the first um, healthcare provider in West Louisville, but it is the first actual hospital where you have emergency department and inpatient space and imaging. That is the first in 150 years. Um, and I say that, um, but they've been excellent partners in figuring out, you know, what, what works and what partnerships work best for them as they continue to give care to. So it's not like West Louisville is just coming. I mean, uh, Norton Hospital is coming into West Louisville and just kind of taking over. No, these are true partnerships. We're right. like, keep your patients. We want to be a support system for you guys too. Let's talk a little bit just before we get into a little bit more of that history, your own personal history, a nurse since, was it 2009 with Norton? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been with them a little over 14 years now. Yeah. So caretaking, so I've worked has with that them. always been in your DNA? Uh, yes. You know, taking care of family. And I watched my mother and my grandmother take care of family and friends. I mean, so much to the point where I watched my grandmother take care of, you know, her um, siblings and other folks that were just in her community. That's just, it's in our DNA. You know, we cook for everybody and we care for everybody. And that's just, you know, everybody's family for us. Um, you just, you treat people with respect, you treat people with dignity and you take care of the people around you. That is just, like you said, it's ingrained in my DNA. I teach my son the same thing. I love that. I love that. As mm -hmm. all kids, we should teach our kids that, right? Absolutely. Yes. Be kind. Let's talk about the year 2017, when you took an idea with another person about the Unity Jam in West Louisville, looking around and seeing what it needed. But it's my understanding at the end of that correspondence with Unity Jam, you also said something else to the CEO of Norton Healthcare, correct? And what was that? Yeah, it was it was the last sentence. And it, it's a, as a matter of fact, I don't even think it was a correct sentence. I said, and it need, there needs to be a hospital in West Louisville. <laughs> that was the end of that whole entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> but that opened, right? I mean, first of it all, did. kudos to you for, because not everybody would have had the, the nerve or the vision or the, whatever that was, what do you call it? I don't know. You, you describe what that was at the end. It, it, we'll call it guts. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll call it guts. <laughs> I love guts. Let me tell yeah. you. So, yeah. then, so you write that and then someone listened, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and I tell you, you know, we, it's a fun story to tell that we included that, right? And, and at that moment, that was a dream. 
Um, and so any of us that work in healthcare, we know that it, you don't just, you know, say, oh, that's a good idea. We're going to build a hospital, you know, five years later. There's a lot that goes into the planning and, you know, from a legislation standpoint, from, you know, a financial standpoint to say we are going to plant our mailbox in a place that hasn't had that in 150 years. I mean, there's some finance people, I call them the finance pros. They think that we're absolutely crazy um, because it doesn't make sense financially to do that. But today we're doing what's right. We're doing the right thing. Um, and healthcare is um, a basic human right. Um, and our, our president and CEO, Russ Cox, saw that. I mean, he walked the neighborhoods when we did Unity Jam. We told him, you know, and he knows people in Louisville. Like this isn't, this isn't new to him. Um, we saw the community forum a couple of weeks ago. There were a lot of stories of people who had relationships with him specific to West Louisville. Um, and, you know, people of color who have a background with Russ Cox. Um, so his relationship with West Louisville and the people um, in this community, it's not new for him. Um, but times have changed. It's been 20 something years. Um, and for him to walk the alleys and walk door to door and hand out flyers for Unity Jam. I mean, the man was in shorts and a T-shirt. He was an everyday guy, not the CEO of, um, of Norton Healthcare. He walked with us and gave that information to the community when we did Unity Jam. And I think that helped as well, you know, getting yeah, the weeds. But I also think the fact that Anybody who's paying attention saw the desert, right? When it came to what yes. was missing. And then what mm -hmm. you all said with the zip code, that a zip code is really, that is going to be what, in 12 years of your life? Yeah. Was it 10 mm -hmm. or 12? 10 or 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 or 12 versus yeah. genetic code. When you hear things like that, I guess it really switched, to me, shifts the paradigm of the bigger question is how can you not do this? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It is that awareness and not living in your bubble, right? You know, Norton Healthcare is the market share in the city. It is our responsibility. It is our duty to know what's going on around the entire city, not just where, you know, where, um, where it's easy um, or where we feel like it might make sense. Um, anybody can go to the East End and, and build something nice and, you know, but we have all that already there. It is being aware that your entire city needs help. And as a healthcare organization, we need to be fair and equitable in that. Let's talk about, and, and the equitable started from everything from construction to architect, where you all were very intentional about how you did things. Let's talk about some of the services that will be offered to, to try to create more equity when it comes to life expectancy mm -hmm. based on where you live in this town, for heaven's sakes. Yeah, you know, and it's not really that difficult. It's literally a copy and paste. So we did research um, two years. I'm so used to saying a year ago. It's been two years since we started that research and we're still having conversations with the community today and we'll continue after the facility is open. Um, but we started two years and we asked some people in West Louisville, what do you want in this facility? What services do you need? Um, and proud and happy to say, um, and it's a little disappointing at the same time, but they wanted the Norton Healthcare that everybody else gets. They wanted a Norton Healthcare facility. They wanted the same care, the same treatment. So that's what we did. Like I said, you have um, 24 hour emergency department, inpatient care, um, the radiology services. We have a retail pharmacy, an inpatient pharmacy. So if people need their prescriptions filled before they ever leave, right access, you can take your prescription home with you um, when we send you home. Um, but more importantly, um, this hospital for me and the message that I'm trying to get out and make sure that people understand that this is a preventative care hospital. We want to catch you before you get to the hospital and have a crisis. So we have uh, primary care for pediatrics or kids and adults. We'll have women's services, so OBGYN services, um, pre and postnatal care, um, orthopedics, cardiology, endocrinology, so your diabetes, your high blood pressure. Um, we know Pete's asthma is an issue in West Louisville. We will have, you know, pediatric pulmonology there. Um, you think it, we've got it. Um, and so that was super important to have outpatient as well. We put a doctor's office in the middle of this facility. So you come in, you got one place for registration, we register you and we get you right where you need to go. There's no issue with wayfinding. Um, we've got a, a lot of green space. That was an ask. Um, a pantry in partnership with Dare to Care. Um, and it's a full pantry and it's going to be refrigerated too. So fresh produce and fresh, you know, things that are, again, deserving of everybody. There's a bistro there, like I said, a community room. So people from the community can host things there. We can teach classes there. Um, community artists um, and incorporating black art. Um, we're going to do that too. When I tell you they listed it and I added it to this facility, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. And then wraparound services we know as well. Now, yes. in the intro though, you said 
you were disappointed by something. What was it when you said they got services that everybody else wanted, but you were disappointed by something? What were you talking about? Because you have to ask for equal treatment and equitable treatment. Got and it. so just making the, you know, us making the assumption that we're going to do something less than, you know, it just tells, it tells the treatment that this community has had. It's like, we deserve the same thing, you know, the rest of your organization gives everywhere else. Um, and so it, you know, it's, we're past, time you know it's it's due we should have had this facility there but i'm happy to say that it's here it's coming now um and just like the the care treatment um that we give at our, our other hospital locations we're going to do at this location too thank you for clarifying that and that was yeah a absolutely really important, really important point to make and i love that so much feedback that you all got and you're implementing mm -hmm. so much of it so there's ownership there's that sense of community and feeling of empowerment that somebody listened to me and is implementing a lot of what we asked for yeah, fun fact. So I looked this up yesterday um, so that I could speak to it. 709 community outreach events since 2022. And we're not even through 2023 yet. And plan <laughs> to keep doing it and do more for 2024. But 709. That 709. is amazing. So you mm -hmm. keep your track shoes on. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Listen, I'm seven days a week and happy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that number is really an important number. So thank you for yes. mentioning that. So tell me that full circle moment from that gutsy uh, woman who said, we need to have a hospital in the West End to now you seeing it, you now being up in it and realizing mm -hmm. that that vision is coming true. What does that feel like? I, you know, I mentioned earlier that it's like a dream. Um, and so a lot of people don't know this, but I didn't even know that Russ decided to build this hospital until he did a press conference. And I wasn't even there for the press conference. I saw it on the news like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Time yes. out. That's crazy. Yes. Yes. I mean, and well, can can we talk about how well of a secret he can keep? I mean, that's a major <laughs> thing. And the person who asked for it didn't even know. Yes, yeah, so I found out with everybody else. But to answer your question, um, the full circle moment, um, there's been a couple. But like I said earlier, when I got to step up on that second floor um, or where we saw the first beam go up um, or to see the land when they cleared it, you know, there's a lot of metal and a lot of um, cleanup that they had to do on that land. And we just thought it was going to take forever to do it. Um, but happy to say that we are on time for the timeline. It's kind of like when you see, you know, when you see the steel erect from the ground and you see the building standing and then, you know, another one when that last beam went up and to see the, you know, the the hospital take shape. It, I mean, it's literally I, I tell you once a week when I get an update or I'm down there or I go talk to the construction crew. It's like somebody pinch me every single time. So it's like almost like you're living in the twilight zone. And then again, you think about it, it's like, well, I'm responsible for making sure this place gets built and I'm responsible for running it. Like never in a thousand years would I think that that would be me. Well, let me ask you one introspective question with that, because what was that teachable lesson that you would like others to hear? The fact that you had the guts and the gumption to write that to a CEO to say something, somebody a part of town is being overlooked. What is that teachable moment that you would share to others about that? Uh, as my mother would say, a closed mouth don't get fed. Okay. You need to speak up, speak up. Um, and there's a way to do it, right? That that wasn't just a, I woke up one morning and said, hey, we need, you know, we need a hospital in West Louisville. In that presentation for doing Uni Jam, we put the data behind it. Um, and so it's kind of like, here are the statistics for the area. And although if I never looked up any information you could ride through West Louisville and see it, you know, so it's not a matter of can you see it or can you not? Um, but when you are addressing an organization um, as large as we are, you got to kind of have your stuff together when you go and, and speak toward that. So um, that last sentence in the proposal was probably the game changer, but we had the data and the reasoning behind it to back up the request. I think that's the most important part. Um, and so it, it sounds like um, a dream and it is a dream, but I think it's important to, when you come to the table with an idea like that or any other dream, to make sure that you have your ducks in a row um, so that somebody takes you serious. Um, I think, you know, and the professionalism behind that as well. You can't just go throw out ideas. You gotta be able to back it up and have a plan. So closed mouth, don't get fed, but have your stuff together when you come to the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. But it really, we should all listen to that, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you took yeah. that chance and you didn't let that opportunity go to waste when you had the attention of someone who could be a game changer with you. 
Which, yeah, he likes to tell people that I stopped him outside of the bathroom. We literally waited until he went to the restroom. And I tell people all the time, yes, he washed his hands. <laughs> That's important in healthcare. Yes, he washed his hands. Um, but it was kind of like, hey, we have this idea and we want to pitch it to you. I know we've got like three minutes before the meeting starts back up. Um, and kudos again to him. I sing his praises all the time. But, you know, to even open the door and let us introduce the idea says a lot about him as a leader. Tell me this doesn't feel like a job talking about it with you. You can tell this is in your DNA. This is your passion. Tell me about that and what this moment means to you, the fact that you are going to run this in West Louisville. Yeah, I mean, I say I've been with the hospital for 14 years and I started off as a nurse. Um, the best part of telling the story is that I've been there. You know, I've done the work. I've worked with patients, you know, um, even from an operational standpoint, you don't just, you know, walk into a role like this. Um, and I think we glorify, you know, being in the position, but we don't talk about what gets you here. Um, and so, again, over the span of that time, I'm a young leader, right? I haven't even hit 40. I'm a young leader, but I've done the work to get to this position and I feel like I've earned it. Um, and that doesn't come with just getting a degree and then walking through the door and say, hey, make me the boss. Like I had to do the work I had. I worked as a nurse. You know, I worked in the doctor's offices. I worked directly with physicians. You know, I learned the ropes. I learned the financial piece, the operations piece. Um, and had I made that request and said, hey, we need a hospital in West Louisville, you know, five years when I said it and he asked me to do this. I can tell you right now, I wouldn't have been ready. You know, I was still growing. Um, and so the time that it took, I, you know, we say divine timing, um, but the time that it took between, you know, planting that idea and us building the hospital now, I've learned a lot since then. Um, so I say it's surreal being in the position, but I've rightfully earned my spot. Well, and I'm happy to do it. <laughs> well, I can't think of a more passionate leader than you. And, I love it. Well, I do too. And I know what uh, I, I've already talked to Renee Murphy. We hope to do some programming here around it. And maybe. Yes, she told me I'm time. excited. I yes. have to, because, you know, we're on that Ninth Street divide and that darn thing needs to go away forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. And I'm just so thrilled for you. And thank you for your passion and your leadership. And we'll be talking soon. And thanks so much for doing this interview. Absolutely. And we're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell by you we're not done yet. That's for sure. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>